Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. I got contacted a while back that somebody wanted me to do a tool review and I'm real skeptical of tool reviews because a lot of times they're not very honest. They're just doing it for the product that they're selling or somebody's paying them to do this. You have to remember that I do all this for free. This is all my own time that I should be working right now and I'm not, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you all honest to God real tool review. So I got contacted by this company, it's called Tac Life, and they sent me a 40 meter laser tape measure. Now this is relative, I mean laser tape measures have been around for a little while, but they're finally getting more affordable than they used to be. Uh, this is something I've always wanted, I've never really had a need for one, but uh, after using this one I think this is going to be something I'm going to carry with me from now on. The big advantage to a laser tape measure versus just a regular old tape tape measure is you can measure things with only using one person yourself so that's a real big issue out there in construction or if you're in welding if you're a pipe fitter for instance trying to figure out how long you're going to run a spool or something like that this is a very handy tool just to go out there and mock it up just by yourself so we're going to give it a few tests and see if uh, everything it's stacked up to be so stay tuned it's going to be good all right let's go over a few basic things on this laser tape measure so first thing is to cut it on real easy and i've noticed with this tool here it's very easy to use i know some of this stuff it seems like you got to have a engineering degree to figure out how it works but this one's not too bad one nice thing that everybody's doing nowadays is everything's in metric and and standard now so you can you can press this button down here in the lower left hand corner and it'll go to feet and go to meters and go back to inches it'll even do tenths and hundreds standard inches which is nice and also do millimeters too so super easy on that the way you use it, uh, there's a couple of different modes that you can do. The, the one that, that I think they prefer you to use the most is you'll hit read one time. A laser will come out to aim whatever you're aiming at and check it. You just hit read again and it'll tell you the difference. So for my ceiling right here, it's 14, 3 and a half inches. And uh, you can change what position that you want to read from up here. You'll hit this, uh, clear this out here. Hit this button right here, lower left hand again, and it'll change position from the front here or to the back. So you can do a face measurement or you can do a bottom measurement like if you were in a vessel more or less or a ceiling to a floor. So real, real handy. Uh, another thing that they've got in here, so we'll read another measurement here. We'll just hit my ceiling again and uh, you can subtract that say you want to read from the face this time so we'll go from the face and then you'll say subtract that say subtract from this uh, button this right hand top button and then you'll hit read again and uh, from the front measurement right here is 13, 10 and a half and your difference is 4 and an eighth. That'd be super handy if you were um, laying out a floor grid to figure out uh, threshold tolerances or, or wall tolerances or anything. And that, that'd be super handy. So good stuff. It'll also save numbers. Uh, you got right here uh, bottom right hand corner. If you measured say uh, 15 or 16 measurements you could actually hit this and it'll pull them back to where they were so let's take another reading here okay 12 foot and then you hit save on that or you may have to hold it maybe not I think I may have got that wrong but uh, you can delete all that and you'll hit recall and it'll remember the measurement that you took so and it can hold up to 30 numbers so uh, you may not know exactly what they are but you'll have all your numbers still have to write some things down but 
very very handy tool and that's just the basics on this actual tool it can do a whole lot more like I said if you wanted this in metric you could just go to say meters same thing measure to the top It'd be four meters and 4.23 meters more or less so really cool device so that's just the basics on it. Let's uh, let's check some of the numbers here on this thing and see how accurate it really is. This is definitely a tool that you need to read the manual for. Um, it, there's a lot of good stuff in here showing you how to use uh, Pythagorean theorems <clears throat> to measure hypotenuses and stuff like that. I know this stuff looks like super complicated, but I just studied it here for like five minutes, and it's it's super easy. So I have to give them kudos for making a real a tool that you can actually use relatively easy. So uh, I was looking through the specs here, and where did I see the specs? Oh, right here. It says this accuracy distance measurement is accurate to uh, plus or minus two millimeters. So four millimeters total. So that's that's actually decently accurate. I mean, there's a lot of machines out there that's not that accurate. So we'll test that and see how accurate it really is. So we'll do a short distance measurement and we'll do a long distance measurement and see how close it is. So let's take a look. All right, we're going to give it a quick test right here. Now, I was reading in the manual here that this thing has to be calibrated. So this is straight out of the box, uncalibrated. So we'll test its accuracy. And like I said before, the uh, the accuracy on this is supposed to be plus or minus two millimeters, which you know it could be as much off as four millimeters. So we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. So we're doing a uh, this is my brand new Kurt Vice, by the way. I love this thing, but not the point. But it's a nice, good reference surface that I can measure. You know, everything's nice and square and true. So we'll take a measurement. Okay. We've got eight inches and five sixteenths. So let's measure it. I'm just we're gonna do this old school, just measure it with a ruler. And oh that looks like eight inches three eighths. I'll let y'all take a look, make sure I'm not lying. So she's out a little bit. I don't know if it's the calibration issue or what so I'm gonna read how to calibrate this thing real quick and uh, we'll take another measurement and see if we can get it right okay I've been sitting here for the last half hour trying to figure out how to calibrate this thing and I ain't figured it out yet maybe one of y'all out there has had one of these and can tell me but uh, that uh, that's not good anyways I was looking it has plus or minus two millimeters of accuracy and that's that's actually crazy because if you do the math on that that's like 79 thousandths you can easily see 40 thousand so I uh, I don't know that it ain't looking too good especially in a short run a long run you can kind of differ a little bit but a short run it ought to be a lot more accurate than that I kind of don't understand that but moving on we're gonna take a long measure measurement now and see if it's any better I swear these fluorescent lights are terrible at reflecting light. Anyways, I don't know if you can read that from there, but that's dead nuts. That's 162 and 5 sixteenths. I'm going to move it back just a little bit and we'll try another measurement maybe back here. We'll go to exactly 166 according to my tape measure. And we'll try again. 166 and a sixteenth, so about a 30 second out. That's not bad course my tape may not be exactly true as well and the what we're shooting up against may not be exactly square so it, it it's it looks good from long point and I imagine it would continue to do to do that well the further you go so we'll take one more long measurement just to confirm that okay we're at let's say 208 and seven sixteenths. Let's see what it reads. 
208 and a half. So once again, 16th out. And like I said, it's probably hitting that not square piece over there on that bottom of that welder. So not bad. Far distance, it's it's really good. It's closed in there right at it up. Um, yeah, about plus or minus, well, really plus 60 thou, something like that. So that's not bad for what we have, 17 feet. So can't complain with that. Okay, we're going to set up a little demonstration right here. Now this right here is nothing but a right angle triangle that I've set up here. And if you wanted to get this long point up here, figure out what the measurement is from this point to a point up here, doesn't matter how far, usually would, you would take your tape measure and measure it from one corner to the other and that's what you would get. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It's, it's great in a short run, but what if that run is say 20 feet and your tape is going to bend in the middle so you're not going to get a real accurate measurement. This here is where this little laser tape measure really comes into its own because that laser is straight no matter what. So you'll set it up to do a you'll set it up to do a, an actual um, more or less a trig calculation and we'll just give it a shot real quick. So it wants us to measure one leg and then the other. I know it's really hard to see that thing moving but that's how you set it up. So we'll do the top first. So we'll read one, shoot down to the bottom. Okay. We'll come down and place the bottom right here. I got a block of wood on the other end so it has somewhere to read. Okay. And just like that it'll tell us our distance. According to this, it's 70 and 9 sixteenths is our pot news. So I'm going to check it with the tape. 70 and 9 sixteenths. According to my tape, I've got 70 and 5 eighths. I imagine there's a little bit of slack on the end of my tape measure here. So I believe that is pretty dead reckoning. That's pretty close. So super handy and that, like I said that's a short run if you were to do that over 20 or 40 feet it'd be very simple to do but that's pretty neat how all that works I'm curious to see if this laser actually reads where the laser is pointing or if it's something else I got an error so let's try that again Maybe too small. Okay, it read it. 15 3 eighths. That sounds not right. That's way more than 15 inches. Hmm. Let's try again. Now, let's just read the vice right there. Okay, 18 and 5 eighths. That sounds about right. All right. Let's try to hit this again. Okay, there is a, okay, it is 15, all right. It looks like that the laser on the front of here, the, uh, that's the laser right here, and I'm guessing it's shooting out like maybe an infrared beam or something like that. That tells it the distance right there. So the laser is not exactly where it's aiming. It's close, but not exactly. So that's pretty interesting. I wonder if you can see the infrared on the camera, if it even does it. Let's see if it'll do it. I'm just going to shoot right here to see if we see anything. Yeah, something went on there. That's pretty interesting. Okay, we're back on the vise here on the mill. I'm going to do a destructive test real quick. No, we're not going to smash it in the vise. But this is a real good way to test its repeatability. So, we'll hit a mark here looks like we're at seven inches and one eighth of an inch so let's do a destructive test on it real quick to see how durable it actually is okay this 
what's happened to everybody. Tape measure hits the floor. So I'm going to cut it off to simulate it being off. Okay. Just a plain old drop from the top ledge all the way to there. That's a concrete floor. So we'll drop it. All right. Pick it back up. See if it still turns on. Seems to be okay. So we'll do another repeatability test in the vise. Okay, once again, we'll put the tool in. Read it. Seven inches and one eighth, if you can read that. But yeah, it survived that. Um, see if we got any damage on here. Looks to be pretty good. It hit right on a corner too as it fell. So, not bad. Let's try a little higher. Okay, got a six foot ladder here. Same test. We'll try the back end this time. Place it on the edge of the ladder. Give it a push. Okay, it hit the rung halfway down, so that may have helped it. But that was a very accurate test. Once again, it hit a corner, so we'll do the repeatability. Back on, so that's a good sign. I'll see if it'll read one more time. Uh oh, seven and three sixteenths. I know y'all can, y'all probably can't see that. Let's try it one more time. Seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. So we, apparently we messed up the calibration. Let's try again. Seven three sixteenths. Seven three sixteenths. Okay, so it's showing three sixteenths. It's showing about 30 second out. We'll test it with our ruler again. That's definitely seven and a quarter. Yeah, right at it. Three sixteenths. We've actually may have made it better, better calibration. That's hilarious by dropping it. So. Ain't that funny. Okay, I just ran the test again at a longer distance and it is consistently showing the same thing. So, that vice, it may be too shiny or something. We'll try that. I think that may be some of our issue here. Okay, I put a piece of masking tape back here so it ain't so reflective. We'll try again. Six and seven eighths. Six and thirteen sixteenths, six and five sixteenths, six and three quarter, six and nine sixteenths, six and fifteen sixteenths. Okay, we're getting measurements all over the place. I think it's a combination of, of a short distance plus a bunch of shiny stuff all around it because I think this eye right here kind of spans out into a cone as it gets further and further away. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but you can definitely see if it'll focus. That we got a lot of different measurements in there. Maybe I should go away from fractions. Let's go to back to, uh, there you go, there's feet. You can tell it's been differing back and forth. If we go to uh, meters here, you can tell. That, that was the same measurements over and over again. There you go, a little bit different view on it but uh turns out it don't like close range the longer it is the better it is so that's unusual guys that's about gonna wrap it up last thing i wanted to talk about is my opinion of this tool and personally i think it's a good tool the only problem i have with it is it's very very situary to to what you do with it will it replace the tape measure no can it do things better than a tape measure? Some of them it can. 
some of, the, some of the best things that I can think of right off the top of my head that this would be real good for foundation work if you were measuring inside of your foundation piers trying to get them all straight or level. Another good one that it would be good for is doing a rolling offset on pipe where you don't have to have four guys sitting up there trying to measure, holding your tape and measuring different points and holding levels and stuff like that. It does very, very well at long measurements. I consistently saw it hold within 30 thou tolerance long measurements. Didn't matter how long it was, it would consistently stay there. The problem with it is it's short measurements. It doesn't do very good anything that's under 12 inches or one foot. So, which I don't think you would use a tool like this for that, but you never know. But I just wanted to point that out because I did have a lot of issues with it at short range. It would be off as much as half an inch in, in some aspects. It did real good in the durability test. That, was, that wasn't very hard to test, but this is concrete and that was a pretty good drop. So this is just ABS plastic, I think. It's got some kind of a rubber polymer that surrounds it to help it cushion the blow in a fall but it, it did its job. It's lightweight enough that it didn't break itself. A lot of plastic will chip. This held up pretty well. I think it's uh, moisture uh, resistance is pretty decent too, uh, having that rubber compound on there. I don't think it's waterproof like a lot of electronics, but, or well, like a lot of truck electronics aren't, but uh, I think it would hold up pretty good if you came in a, a rainstorm or high moisture in a toolbox. So, Biggest problem I have with it is it runs on batteries, but as do a lot of tools. There's nothing worse than going out on a job and picking a tool up out of the truck just, in, just to notice that it won't work. But uh, that's a small price to pay. Remember, I just barely scratched the surface on everything this tool can do. It can do a lot more than what I talked about. I just showed some of the basic things and some of the things that I liked about it. So all in all, good tool review. If I were to hit it between a a zero and a 10, I'd have to come in to a solid seven and a half to an eight. Um, that, that's pretty good for an electronic tool. There ain't many of them that I like. So once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had something out of it. Like this, subscribe to me if you hadn't already, and guys, I'll see y'all next time.